Hi. Looks like it's working this time. Got it to come right up from the earlier scheduled video. Anyway, this is my reading of Dennis Pagan's article, The Naked Truth About Stalls. It's in an effort to make learning about hang gliding more available to people so they don't have to read the article and maybe I'll throw in a little interpretation. I'll try and just read the article the way it is and keep my stuff until the end, but we'll see. This is my first one. So, Naked Truth About Stalls, 1985 by Dennis Pagan. And that's what's great about a lot of the hang gliding articles as they were written in the 70s and 80s because that information hasn't really changed. And uh, this one on my forum, it's kind of funny. A lot of the comments about this one are about how <laughs> cheesy it is, but it's nice. Pagan, Pagan put some effort into this one, obviously. <clears throat> so here we go. Make Truth About Stalls by Dennis Pagan. I pulled my hat down over my ears, adjusted my collar and stepped out onto the wet sidewalk. It was midnight in this hustling city. A cold rain whipped around my coat and streaked through the street lamps. I kept to the shadows on my way to a rendezvous with faith. Call me a public defender. Call me a safety officer. Whatever the title, my job is to prowl the night and protect the public with its innocent dreams. Tonight, I had a specific goal. The bust of my career. A year of legwork had turned up the secret hideout of the lower 48's most notorious organization known as the Stall Gang. They were holed up in the back room of a local dive in the seamy section of the city, doing business as the angle of attack saloon. I edged, a, I edged through a littered alley and reached a rear window of the saloon. The smoky glass revealed what I had hoped for. The entire stall clan and their minions were gathered around the long table. I could see the twins, Tip and Whip, the nefarious Grady, Young Turk High Speed and the dreaded Downwind Stall, along with their moles Air Speed and Attitude, smoking, drinking, and planning their sordid business. You want the naked truth. A cold-blooded reptile like me has seen it all. But you and Mr. and Mrs. Sunnydale, America had better prepare yourself for a jolt to your homespun Sunday school sensibilities. These high-rolling gutter snipes were plotting to undermine that lofty pursuit of mankind known as hang gliding. Their modus operandi was seduce unsuspecting pilots with the wiles of the beguiling airspeed and attitude, then send in one of the Stahl brothers to maim, cripple, and yes, murder. It was my job to stop them. Before I go, let me give you the facts, ma'am. The boys and babes at the bar. There's a curious relationship among stalls, airspeed, aka airspeed, attitude, aka attitude, and the angle of attack. For instance, stalls are dependent on angle of attack. That's where they hang out. When the spirits flow and the general ambiance of the place gets too high, a critical point is reached, and in steps a stall to wreak havoc, bring everything down to earth and spoil the fun. Airspeed is a beautiful but moody mistress. She can be smooth as silk or dangerous as fair de lance. She is contrary as they come. When the angle of attack is down on a quiet evening, air speed is active as a magpie. When the house is high, air speed is down. That's the cue for one of the stalls to come in and start busting up the place. Miss Attitude is another piece of cake entirely. She goes with the flow. Although she's somewhat independent, she's generally up when the angle of attack is up and down when the joint is down. Addy and Air, being the most visible, are the best indicators of the whereabouts of the Saul brothers. Now, let me clear this all up by quoting from the Anti-Crime Bureau's Handbook for Aspiring Pilots. In layman's terms, a stall is caused by one thing only, too high an angle of attack. As the air passes over the wing, it follows a curving path. As the angle of attack is raised, the angle between the path of the oncoming air and the reference line of the wing is angle of attack. The air must follow an increasingly sharper curve. Eventually, at the stall or critical angle of attack, 
The inertia of the air prevents it from making such an abrupt change of direction and it separates from the wing. This is a stall. See figure one. Let's see if I can hold this up for those. This is a lot for people to listen. I'm not sure if the glare is going to help. No, it works pretty good. There's figure one. You can see in the second picture, the air flow has broken from the top of the wing. Okay, now I guess scroll back when you find out. <laughs> a stall happens suddenly with a rapid increase in drag, a subsequent loss of lift, and a further slowing of airspeed. As soon as a stall occurs in earnest and an aircraft moves downward, parentheses loss of lift which results in a dropping of the nose, since most of the lift is created in the forward portion of the wing. And a dive until proper angle of attack is reestablished. Airspeed is a fairly good indication of an impending stall, since airspeed slows as angle of attack is raised and vice versa, as long as these changes aren't too rapid. Remember that a hang glider with a pilot weighs from 200 to 280 pounds or so, this means inertia is a significant factor. If angle of attack changes are rapid, airspeed won't have a chance to adjust to the new angle of attack, and thus will not be a true indicator of angle of attack. However, for the majority of our flying, airspeed is a good indicator of angle of attack. Remember, airspeed increases with wing loading, so the more excess weight you carry, the higher airspeed at which a stall occurs about a half a mile difference for every 10 pound change. I don't know about that, depends on the glider. You should learn to sense this airspeed. Your senses are probably as accurate as most of the airspeed indicators on the market. Well, this 1985, maybe not now. And increase it when stall or critical angle of attack is approached. Attitude is another indicator of an impending stall. Attitude means where your glider's nose is pointing. A high attitude means the nose is up. Low attitude means the nose is down. Just like airspeed, however, attitude is not always a true indicator of angle of attack, also due to inertia effects. For example, if you're in a zoom, a dive followed by a climb out, your nose be, may be pointed very high, yet you have lots of airspeed and a low angle of attack, high alt attitude, let me see, let me start over. A dive followed by a climb out. Your nose be, may be pointed very high, yet you may have lots of airspeed and a low angle of attack. High attitude, a low angle of attack. If you hold this high attitude for long, your airspeed will slow, angle of attack will then increase and a severe stall will result. Note that it is also possible to have a low attitude and a high angle of attack. We look at both cases below. In general though, attitude or nose position is a good stall warning factor in the majority of our flying. The final indicator of a stall is reduced or lack of control, especially roll control. How air speeds and detached flow from the wings render our gliders less responsive to our control inputs. The glider will feel like it has a head of its own when stalled. This is a red letter sign to pull in the bar, lower the nose, increase airspeed, and lower the angle of attack at once. Note that the fixed wing aircraft use buffeting of the wings or control surfaces to detect a stall, but our flexible wings don't usually give us this feedback. Also in the modern glider with a wider nose angle, you can often push your weight back slowly to produce a stall that results in a mush, with, which increases a sink rate and loss of roll control, but no real stall break due to the rearward body position. This can be dangerous near the ground for there's a tendency to fall off on one wing. Here's a summary. Dangers of a stall. A severe loss of altitude. Loss of control, equally severe. Sign of, signs of an approaching stall. Low or rapidly declining airspeed. High or rapidly rising attitude. Lack of roll authority. Rules of a stall. A wing stalls at one angle of attack. For a given wing loading, an aircraft will stall at a given airspeed 
in non-accelerating flight. A wing will stall at a given attitude, nose up pos position in non-accelerating flight. To give you even more background, here's a file on each of the stall brothers. Starts with the tip stall. You're most apt to meet this stall in a turn or upon landing. Thermaling, <laughs> I'll add that myself. That's because in a turn, the inside wing is at a higher angle of attack. So if a stall occurs, it will show up on the inside tip. Actually, due to the great amount of twists in a hang glider wing, the stall occurs somewhere inboard of the tip, but we call it a tip stall to indicate that the stall occurs further outboard than normal. In a landing situation, ground effect causes a greater loading on the outboard portion of our wings, so again, a stall is likely to occur further outboard. Usually, one wing stalls first and the graceless landing occurs, especially on double surface gliders. Whip stall. This guy is deadly, very deadly. If you dive, then push out, and hold the bar in a stall position, you have created a whip stall. On most gliders, even if you hold the bar at your shoulders or chest after a steep dive, you have a good performance of, chance of performing a whip stall due to inertia and the stability of your glider. A whip stall is deadly because the stall occurs at such a high attitude that the nose, nose falls through rapidly. A severe enough whip stall will result in a tumble on any hang glider you care to name, as well as any ultralight or airplane. A whip stall is probably the most dangerous maneuver you can do in your hang glider, short of performing a poorly executed loop. Figure two shows the results of a whip stall. Any intentional stall that begins with airspeed greater than minimum sink or is initiated with a fast push out should be considered a whip stall. Don't do it. If you wish to demonstrate a stall, have plenty of ground clearance, say 500 feet, head directly into the wind, smooth light wind only, and fly at minimum sink airspeed for at least five seconds. Then slowly push your control forward, control bar forward, until loss of control is felt. It will feel like the wings are sticking. The glider begins to mush or the nose drops through. As soon as a stall is detected, Return the control bar to the position for best glide or a little faster around your shoulders, depending on the glider, and let the natural stability of your glider take care of the rest. The Grady Stall. This guy's full name is Wind Gradient Stall. This type of stall occurs when landing or descending into a wind gradient. Normally, the wind speed is reduced close to the ground norm due to the drag effects of the surface. Consequently, as we descend to land in approximately the lower 50 feet, we may encounter a constantly reducing headwind. If the gradient is severe enough, that is, the wind speed drops off quickly, our glider cannot react to the reduced headwind, again due to, due to the inertia, by speeding up. So airspeed drops, angle of attack increases, an evil Grady stall wipes us out, the gradient stall. The danger of a stall in a gradient is that it happens so close to the ground. Many a pilot has found his nose to be some, suddenly pointing earthward with no room to recover due to wind gradient effects. Even more common on a hang glider is descending in a gradient and encountering a mild stall, which leaves no energy to flare, thud. Remember, you must account for wind gradient effects by putting on speed before you get close to stall, or it will be too late. You must anticipate the presence of wind gradient, for you won't have time to react if you wait to detect an airspeed reduction. In stable conditions, no thermals, or if the wind on the ground appears to be zero, a gradient is probably lurking to do you in. High speed stall. This member of the stall clan is seldom seen, but quite dangerous. Remember we told you that a high angle of attack could occur even with a low attitude. That was a confusing part. Imagine a steep dive in which you push out hard very rapidly. It is possible to raise the nose and increase the angle of attack so fast that a stall occurs before the glider begins pulling out of the dive. This is a high speed stall. It is quite dramatic, especially when it occurs near the ground. Hand gliders have occasionally fallen victim to high speed stall. 
Typical situation is approaching a landing too slowly, stalling into a thermal, diving at the ground, pushing out vigorously to avoid flying into the aforementioned ground, and pancaking hard as the glider performs a high-speed stall, sending shock waves across the countryside. Obviously, this compromises the joy of hang gliding and should be avoided. How? Keep your speed up on landing approaches and shun such urges as diving at the ground. Downwind stall. This is a culprit many of us have heard about. He shows up when we are flying downwind, that is, with the wind coming from our rear, because the wind speed combined with our airspeed determines our ground speed. Flying downwind creates a much faster ground speed than we are when we are flying upwind or crosswind. Now our eyes are the organs that provide us with the most powerful sensory data. If we're close to the ground and all that earth rushing by may send a visual signal like, hey, cowboy, you're flying too fast, the weak input from the feeling in our face may not be detected, so we slow down and tussle with Mr. Downwind stall. Four points. Any aircraft re reacts the same in terms of stall when flying upwind or downwind. It is perception that is different. Avoiding a downwind stall is easy. Just monitor airspeed carefully and maintain said airspeed. Downwind stalls near the ground are dangerous because your ground speed is faster at every point in the stall and recovery. Pain is directly proportional to the relative velocity of your body and earth as the two slam together. So there I was behind the angle of attack saloon about to nab the entire stall gang. I was greatly outnumbered, but I had one great advantage, surprise. Oh, wait, what did I do? Oh. I pulled my persuader from the holster under my coat and burst through the back door. Seven heads turned my way, and seven faces registered identical expressions of anger and awe. I had the drop on them. Old Grady was the first to recover. He chomped a cigar and rasped, still trying to make headlines, uh, patrol boy. Shut up and face the wall, or I'll be making headstones for every one of you, I commanded. All seven of them got up and shuffled over to the wall. Seven did I say, one, two, three, four. A white light seared through my brain and alerted each neuron of the tremendous pain that suddenly invaded the back of my head. I remember thinking how curious it was to see the barroom floor rise up and slap me hard in the face just before my universe turned black. My senses returned with the taste of blood and the sound of scraping. I soon realized that the sound was being made by my body. It was being dragged over rough cement. I felt strong arms lift me and dump me in the back seat of a car. The door slammed. The driver got in and started the car. I heard a sweet voice repeating my address to the driver. I opened my eyes for the first time and through the blur of pain, I saw a beautiful face peering at me with concern, just as the car roared into the street. For the next two days, I nursed a splitting headache the size of the San Andreas Fault and a colossal sense of incompetence. I'd realized my stupidity too late. In my haste to put away the stall gang, I had forgotten about the most conniving stall brother of all, Gus Stall. He had crept up behind me and cold cocked me with a blackjack just as I was counting on the spoils of my victory. Gus is the nickname for Gustin Dustall, one of the worst highwaymen known. When we are flying along at a slow speed, random turbulence or thermals can quickly change our wind, wind velocity, meeting our wings. Such airspeed and angle of attack changes can cause it to stall very rapidly and unexpectedly. Meet gust induced stall. My only way to prevent such a stall is to maintain good maneuvering airspeed in turbulent conditions, especially near the ground. Good maneuvering airspeed is about five miles an hour faster than best glide. Don't fly too fast in turbulence or you will increase the severity of the bumps. I realized that the only thing that saved me on that dismal night was my connection with a certain lady. Yes, it was air speed that pulled me out of that saloon and had a taxi driver haul me away while the Stahl brothers were celebrating my capture. We've had a romantic interlude, she and I, but now it's mostly business. She's one of the best undercover operatives you could ask for. Well, the gang is still on the prowl. Any one of them is capable of jumping you or me at unexpected moments. My only suggestion is to get to know air speed yourself. Get to know her well and pay attention to her information anytime you're exposed to the clutches of the stall gang. She saved my life and she can save yours.
that's the pagan article. I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>